day. It's critical we get the cab on. Let's do this, man. We got a lot of stuff to do. It starts with the cab. Gearheads raved about Iron Resurrection as they swore on its authenticity as a show on auto restoration and customization. The hit Motor Trend series documented how a team of craftsmen at the Martin Bros Customs breathed new life into vehicles that were rusted out and likely headed into the junkyard. Joe Martin, the shop owner, acquired a reputation for his incredible builds which led to his journey into the world of reality television. He was born in Illinois, but his family moved to Texas when he was about 10. Joe's artistic bents had been quite evident since he was a little kid, as he loved to draw on just about any surface. The walls in their house weren't spared, so his mother bought him a sketch pad. Aside from the cars that he tried to copy from Hot Rod magazines, he also enjoyed drawing trains, bicycles, and other modes of transport. He just drew non-stop. Even though he had thought that he was poor at it, he didn't know it then, but it was as though he was practicing for what would be an integral part of his future business, which was conceptualizing designs. Joe didn't receive any formal training whatsoever, but by hanging out with the guys in the neighborhood when he was in his mid-teens, he was able to observe and pick up on things, be it ideas or skills. He painted skateboards, helmets, and bikes when he worked at an aftermarket accessory shop he learned more about the mechanics of vehicles. People around him noticed his talent and began asking him to do custom paint work. Soon, he found himself with so much work that he had to expand from the back of his pickup truck to a house with space at the back that he could use as a shop to handle his workload. His younger brother Jason became part of the operation as they set up Martin Bros bikes. Joe was grateful that he was making a living out of something he enjoyed doing. The company's philosophy in terms of bike building was about putting lots of emphasis on creativity and craftsmanship. Joe said that the people with enough skills could construct anything, but it's solely focused on getting the technical aspects right. One might end up with something good, but lacking in style and imagination. He was certainly not lacking in that regard. Joe's talent was recognized by many, and it was natural for his fans to be curious about who his greatest influence was or who inspired him. He revealed in an interview that he was very much interested in any of the works of the American hot rod builder and designer Boyd Coddington, but he couldn't afford any of it. This inspired him to acquire tools and learn to do things himself. If there were things he didn't know how to do, he hung out with those who could teach him. At that time, bikes weren't that cool, so he didn't really have heroes in this line of work. People whom he considered to have influenced him the most were the local guys whom he acquired his skills from. When Joe got into building or designing, all he wanted was to freak people out with his work or to dig his stuff. He believed that a bike was an extension of one's personality, which meant that much care was put into how a bike would look. When it came to cars, he drew inspiration from old ones, particularly Cadillacs as he liked the body lines or metalworks from the early models of General Motors. He also preferred the appearances of old aircraft and trains. Later on, ideas for his designs would come from some music he listened to or creatures he saw in films. Basically, he said it could be anything that sparked his imagination. Motor Bros Bikes offered custom designed wheels, exhaust pipes, and other aftermarket accessories. Joe never imagined his creations would gain a lot of attention not even locally, but certainly not at a national level, but recalled winning Easy Rider shows and subsequently being featured in magazines. Soon, producers from the Discovery Channel became interested in him being part of Biker Build-Off. The show was first launched in 2002 as a single competition, but as it became popular, it turned into a regular series. Each participant was given 10 days to construct a customized bike, and then taken on the road to prove that it was completely operational. If it broke down on its way to the bike show, the builder was given an hour to fix it before he or she was disqualified. When the bikes made it to the show, the audience would cast their votes to determine the winner. Joe joined in 2004, and although he lost during his first try, he later won and qualified for the World Biker Build-Off that same year. He proudly represented the US as he competed against Australia's Scotty Cox and England's Russell Mitchell as he pushed the boundaries and went, for, and went for something he believed was most radical. He was declared the greatest bike builder in the world. 
Joe originally worked with cars and then with bikes. Especially during the motorcycle craze in the 90s, his business was booming. But with the economic downturn in 2008, Joe had to reduce his operation. Later on, he and his wife Amanda moved from Dallas to Dripping Springs in rural Texas. Coincidentally, famous fabricator and customizer Jesse James of Monster Garage was also in the area, and Joe had the chance to work with him for some time. And Joe had the chance to work for him for a time, as he was just starting to establish his business there, Martin Bros Customs, which specialized not just in fabricating bikes, but also cars, trucks, and boats, co-owned by Joe, his brother Jason, and wife Amanda. With Joe still on top of his game, it didn't come as a surprise when the producers of Biker Build-Off reached out to him when they were looking for new content for the automotive theme programming of the Velocity Channel, later rebranded as the Motor Trend Network. With the help of his brother, who had video equipment, they made a teaser reel on what they did at the shop and presented it to Velocity. Before long, Joe had signed a five-year contract with a network of the show, with his brother as one of the producers. Iron Resurrection premiered on the 13th of April, 2016. When he described what the show was all about, he said, My team hunts down rusted wrecks. We knock out the ugly and put in the cool, and turn these buckets of rust into street art. Basically, Amanda and Joe's best friend, Jason Shag Arrington, in charge of sales and marketing, would travel all over the Texas countryside in search of classics that were thought to be just a heap of junk. Shag was known for making the best deals in acquiring not just cars, but also the parts needed. As Joe's reputation preceded him, the shop also had people coming to avail of their services. Joe would put to paper what he envisioned the vehicle would look like after it was restored. And then, he and his crew would make it happen. It was not just fans of Joe Martin who tuned in, but also those who appreciated reality TV with, without all the drama that most producers usually injected into the narrative to make the show more intriguing. Perhaps with his brother as one of the producers, they had more control of their content or what would be aired. Not that they were trying to give themselves a positive image, but there weren't really any fights, shouting matches, or drama that went on in the other shops. Working with family members could become problematic for some, but not for Joe. His brother was with the TV production, and Amanda handled the finances so she was always in the office. He said that they never got on each other's nerves as they worked on different things, and besides, they were too busy that they didn't have the time to fight. Joe claimed that through the years, he was able to build a team with people who were the best in their field, and who all got along well. So, the chances of any of them butting heads over something trivial or a fight turning physical would be very rare or nil. The guys pulled pranks on each other, sure, but they were all in good fun, and no one felt slighted when they joked around. Then, when the team was under pressure, they reacted to the situation well, to get it resolved in no time. Problems naturally cropped up, but Joe didn't want the focus to be on those things, saying that they weren't actors, so there was no need to be dramatic about the things that happened in the shop. Also, he sometimes had to remind the producers that viewers weren't stupid, and could easily see if a particular scene was staged. Joe mentioned in an interview that he wanted the biggest takeaway from the show to be the fun of building a car as he was hoping that he could inspire people to work on their vehicles. That might have been gathering dust in their garages or barns for years. It was known to many that he favored old cars, particularly those designed by the legendary General Motors designer, Earl Harley. From time to time, he would come across something that he found special, which he ended up owning. His wife Amanda's uncle, Terry Smith, was selling his 56 Ford truck that had been sitting in his barn for 30 years since 1990 and Joe was interested. Amanda and Shag went to check it out and loved it. Terry shared that his grandfather, who owned a Ford dealership, bought the truck upon seeing it for the first time fresh from the manufacturer. From then on, he drove it until he sold it to his friend before he passed away in the late 60s. Terry, who bought it back for $350, wanted to sell it for $500, but Amanda and Shag said they would buy it for a little over $1,000, saying that it was the first time they offered a client more money. Joe fell in love with it too, 
and wanted to keep it in the family, planning to use it as a work truck for the shop. His crew took it apart, down to its bare frame, and made the necessary adjustments so it would fit bigger sets of wheels, bigger brakes, an LS3 engine, and modern technology. When it came to its style and appearance, he wanted it to look old and rough, complete with rust, but retained its original color of meadow mist green. Joe painted the shop's logo on the door, following in the tradition of a hot rod shop. Amanda's uncle couldn't be happier with what they'd done to the truck. Joe then gave Terry a ride. Joe said that a Generation 2 Nova was everybody's favorite out of all the Novas, but he'd never owned one. So when a customer came in wanting to trade his 67 Nova, he didn't let that opportunity pass him by. Clearly excited, he said that it was a perfect canvas to become a kick-ass muscle car, as it had great lines and body. Everything looked cool from the grill and headlights to the taillights. However, it still needed a lot of work to transform it into what Joe wanted. All the guys put in the time and effort to accomplish that. After they did the work, everyone agreed that it had the whole package. The wheels, the LS motor, the color, champagne two tint, and the stance. The 67 Nova was one of Joe's dream cars. So even if there were people interested in it, he really didn't want to part with it. However, if he could get a good return for it, then he would consider selling it. In the meantime, he was going to keep it and enjoy it. Long after the episode aired, the header or cover photo of his shop's Facebook page was still his 67 Nova. Iron Resurrection was regarded by most as one of the best car restoration shows around, as it was focused on building or customizing vehicles without all the drama that was usually part of reality shows. For a time, avid fans were worried about the future of the show when the COVID-19 pandemic hit, as businesses closed and there were lockdowns and travel restrictions. It didn't help that there was no talk about a fifth season and the fourth one ended in April 2020. Fans were also aware of Joe Martin only signing up for a five-year contract. When news that some of his crew members such as Javier Shorty Ponce and Philip Cotto left Martin Bros Customs for family or personal reasons, many became quite concerned. It appeared that Cotto's exit was brought on by his wife's career change that necessitated a move to Atlanta, Georgia. Shorty's family was in Dallas and he opted to open his own shop there so he could be near his loved ones. All this was stated on the official Facebook page of the show, as they replied to a fan who was asking them what was happening. They said that people's priorities in life sometimes changed, but this didn't stop other fans from speculating as to the real reasons behind their decision to leave. True enough, it was revealed later that Shorty was given his own automotive restoration show with a Latino flair called Shorty's Dream Shop, which premiered in October 2022 on Motor Trend. As for Joe, his show was still going strongly as the sixth season aired in 2022. Being in a hit reality show changed his life. At car shows, such as the Specialty Equipment Market Association, the SEMA show, he found it strange that people recognized him and even asked for his autograph or to pose with them for photos. He just saw himself as a regular guy who didn't warrant all the attention he was receiving. It was humbling for him. As he said, there were other talented people who had the same job as him, but didn't have the same opportunity to be in a TV show. If there was a downside to being on TV, it would have to be the grueling schedule. Filming each step of the process was not that simple or easy, as there was pressure to finish the car quickly because the production people still had work to do before an episode could be aired. However, no matter what the producers said, Joe refused to do a rush job because he didn't want to sacrifice quality. Even if Joe sometimes second-guessed his decision in doing the series due to the long hours that it entailed, he said that he had no regrets as he was grateful to have their work featured on TV and was great for their business, giving them the chance to meet new clients and work on amazing cars. His whole attitude is acknowledged as refreshing in the world of reality TV. Thank you for spending some time with us. Make sure to like and subscribe so you never miss another video. We also handpick these videos which we recommend you watch next. You can talk to us on all social medias or ask a question in the comments below.
Thank you for being with us, and we'll see you back tomorrow.